Welcome back. Uh, this is our Workout Wednesday Fall 2021 series. Uh, today's episode is going to be about uh, a long run called, I suppose you could call it, the ladder cut down long run. And I like it. Uh, we haven't done this one a ton, but we just did it last week with Stephanie Bruce and Kellen Taylor. And the idea is that it sort of mimics maybe something you've done if you ran high school track or college track, or even if you didn't, maybe you've done something like this um, at your at your local speed workout session, or maybe your coach has had you do something like this. But oftentimes in, in track, if you're training for a, a mile or a two mile or a 5K or 10K, you do something like the classic 1600, 1200, 800, 400 with maybe two to three minutes rest in between. And you run the mile pretty fast, but then the 1200 faster, the 800 faster still, and then you really rip that 400. And those are paces that are often 5K and below, right? So maybe you're running the 1600 at 5K pace and then you're cutting down and you're running the quarter pretty much all out, right? And it's short workout. And, and those are fun. Those are fun workouts because you get faster as you go. Uh, so this is the same idea but you're doing it in the long run. So if you're training for a marathon, it's a chance to have some fun and do something that's maybe a little bit different, but it's still marathon focused because instead of paces that are super, super fast, like you do if it were a track session, you're slowing those down a little bit and you're maybe running a half mile in between instead of just a standing rest, uh, which makes it more of a strength oriented cut down, right? So is that making sense? Um, the way we did it last week with Steph and Kellen uh, is actually a good example because there's a million ways to do this, right? The way we happened to do it last uh, Saturday was we had them start out together with a four mile and I'll just give you their paces. I'll explain the paces in a minute. But they did four miles at 550 pace, then a half mile float at 320, which is 640 pace. So 50 seconds slower than that 550 um, pace that they were running on the four mile. And that half mile float at 320 remained throughout. So the idea between a float recovery as opposed to a jog recovery is that you're still running at a pretty good clip. So again, this is very marathon oriented as opposed to track oriented, and yet it's got some of those track workout elements. So we did four miles at 550, half mile float. Three miles at 540, half mile float. Two miles at 530, half mile float. One mile at 520, half mile float. And then Steph was done because she's not um, quite up to Kellen yet in terms of volume. So Steph did four, three, two, one. That was her ladder cut down. Kellen kept going and after the mile and then the half mile float had a 1200 half mile float, an 800 half mile float, and then a 400. And then one last half mile float, which ended up equaling 15 miles on the day, which is kind of pretty cool. So it's a lot, it's, in my opinion anyway, it's a much more fun way to run 50 miles than going out and jogging easy for 15 uh, because you had that structure to it and you got faster and faster and faster. And if you want to think about it for you and how to set your paces, like let's say, because 4, 3, 2, 1, 12, 8, 4, half mile floats, 15 miles, that's a lot. Uh, what I might suggest for most marathoners that want to try this is actually keeping that end part, which is just really fun, that 12 and the 8 and the 4, but knocking out that 4 at the beginning. So you do 3 miles, 2 miles, 1 mile, 1,200, 800, 400. And I don't remember exactly how he did it, but I remember getting this workout from Ryan Hall. I, I think he did this in one of his Boston Marathon uh, buildups when he was competing and Flowtrack filmed it and that's where I got it. But anyway, the point is we all we all take from one another. That's what I'm trying to do here is, is giving you guys some ideas. Um, so what, what I would do is, is start with that three mile and, and have that three mile be kind of a conservative you know, steady state pace. So what you're pretty sure you could do for two and a half hours of racing. So so find that, as I've said every week on these videos, uh, if this is the first one you're watching, it's basically going online, finding one of the many online running calculators that are out there, typing in a, in a very recent half marathon or marathon time, uh, or, or very honestly assessing what you could do right now for a half marathon or marathon, uh, typing that into the calculator, 
check out the equivalent race times for all the different distances, check out what it says you could run for two and a half hours in, in, in a race, boom, that's, that's your uh, pace for the start of this workout. So let's say, uh, I think I used this example last time, let's say uh, it said you could run 30K in two and a half hours. So you look at what that pace per mile is, Boom, you get that, and then off you go, and you um, you go down 10 seconds per mile. So again, just using Kellen's workout as an example, 540 per mile up here at altitude is about her two and a half hour race pace, I would say. Um, so she ran three miles at 540, then we added 50 seconds uh, for a, a per mile pace, which... Of course, 550, 50 seconds is 640. That's how we determined what her half mile float was going to be the rest of the time. So that was a 320, 800 was her, her half mile was her, her float. And, and then we just went down 10 seconds. So we did three at, at, at 540, two at 530, one at 520. The 1200 was meant to be at 510 per mile pace. The 800 was meant to be at five minute pace. And then the 400, we actually ended up doing at about, well, yeah, at about 4.48 pace, so a, another 10 seconds faster. So it's just 10 seconds faster each one. But the cool thing is, at the end of all that running, she ran a 400 in 72 seconds. So that's that feels good to know, hey, if I had to, at the end of a marathon, if I had to find a way to outkick my opponent, I could do it, right? And, and it's just... If anything, it's just a, it's a literal change of pace, right? And, uh, and sometimes that's fun because in marathon training, we have to run a lot of miles to be ready to go. And a lot of those miles aren't particularly fast. And so to be able to get the green light to run kind of fast at the end of a long run feels really good. And I'll just add this. One thing I think about, if, if I was working with age group athletes now, uh, I think if I was writing schedules... I would make these weekend workouts, these Saturday and or Sunday long runs really hard. And I, and I would make the, the midweek workouts pretty easy, honestly, because midweek you've got work, you've got kids, you've got things you have to be doing. You don't have a lot of time. Just knock out a solid workout, not a ton of volume, just basic stuff, a few mile repeats, a tempo run, a three, four mile tempo run, something like that. And then load up and really run a big workout on the weekend. That's when you actually have time, hopefully, to recover and, and, and do something that's really specific to the marathon. And, and, and take it or leave it, but that, that's sort of my advice. And that's why a lot of these workouts that we're highlighting on in this series are, are pretty hard. Uh, but, but that's assuming that you're prepared for them and, and you're not killing yourself during the week. You're, 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 you're just doing solid work. And then you're running a really big weekend marathon specific workout. That's kind of the idea here. But this is the ladder cut down long run. Uh, give it a try. I think you'll enjoy it.